So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, here comes. All right. So let me fire up my notepad. All right. So I really don't think that I need to revise all of these things. Okay. So last time we were discussing about the location directives. In short, location directives mean they are going to decide the pick and put locations. That's it. And work template is going to create a work. So let's start with the purchase order receiving. Purchase order receiving process. As I said, what we need, first we need these two items. Okay. Let's create the work templates first. So I'll go to my advanced warehouse management. Okay. Where is it? Okay. And then we'll go to setup work and work templates. So this is our first step, the same setups we'll do in, in case of sales also. So basically this is going to create the work, okay? The pick line and the put line. So what I'll do is so we can create uh, uh, the work templates for a lot of these things. So I'll go to purchase orders, I'll click on new and so let me duplicate this tab so that I can see my warehouse and all. So all we need to do here is like, we can write uh, purchase receive, purchase receive. We can write the same template as the description. Let me look at my warehouse, inventory management, and to break down on my warehouse. So the warehouse that we want to use is advanced warehouse AWS that we created. Okay. So what I'll do is um I'll click on save. So once I add the work template and work template description, it, it, it will keep saying invalid until and unless it has a proper pick line and a put line. So uh, guys, as you can see, there are other work templates here also. So you might be having a question, but within there are already a lot of work templates. Well, this is depending on uh, like, you know, for, for which warehouse you are using it. So for example, uh, they've also mentioned these names of warehouses, 25, 61, we can write, you know, uh, just, just to, differentiated, we can write uh, uh, our warehouse name, it's like AWH, so that we can know, okay, this is for AWH warehouse, AWH, although it's not necessary, you know, naming convention depends on you. So I'll click on save. So once I do that, and now I can see the new is enabled, I'll click on new. So first I want is pick, so we can see that a work process, you know, it can be a combination of a lot of things. It's like counting adjustments. So, you know, a lot of things uh, can be there, but essentially what the system is looking is for pick and for put. Then we have something called work class ID. So uh, work class ID also we have to define, I'll go and click on view retail. So we have to create a work class ID uh, for a particular work order type. So let me go and say purchase and work order type is purchase orders. Click on save. So basically work class ID uh, is used, uh, you know, we can define the valid put location types here. So if you want to restrict, uh, you know, when you are performing, when the warehouse advanced warehouse worker is performing some sort of uh, 
put processes, you know, uh, so the system, if it is having a work class ID and we are having a valid put location type, so it will actually check for that. Basically, in short, work class ID can be a little bit confusing for you people, so I will not uh, tell a lot about this, but it, it acts as a kind of a filter, a kind of a, restrict, a restriction mechanism uh, when you are going to use a particular work created with this uh, work template and when the warehouse uh, mobile device user will try to put it it will actually check whether this is the valid put location or not for now uh, i'm not even going to put any kind of location since this is a mandatory requirement so i've just created this okay so don't get too confused you will anyway understand how all of these things will work so we just created vk purchase so i'll add this one Similarly, I need another work type and that is put. Minimum of one pick and put pair must be there in a work template so that it becomes valid. Click on same, I can use the same work class ID. And come on. Mm -hmm. The system seems to be a bit slower. Click on save and now we can see that the warning disappears. Okay, so there are a few fields here. For example, uh, automatically process. So if you enable this field, so what it will do is it will automatically try to, you know, pick the item, put the item, the work will be automatically done by the system. Uh, uh, no user interaction will be required and you cannot stop it also. So there are there are a few things that we can do. But for now, I really don't want to complicate uh, uh, all of these things for you guys. Okay, so I'll just click on save. But wait, there's one thing that's missing and that is we've specified the work template. We've said, okay, you know, receiving purchase orders please create a pick and a put to work that's perfectly fine but for which warehouse for that we'll go to edit query and we'll have to add uh, a field warehouse here so that warehouse okay and here we can use our filter that's it we'll click on okay and it will ask us that grouping will reset continue always press yes so this is how we create a work template. Now we have created it for purchase. That's it. We are done with the work template. Now our work will be created. But what will be the pick location and what will be the put location? Now this we'll define using the location directives. Never ever get confused between location directives and location profiles because they sound very similar. When I was learning, I was always confused and it took me a while to understand, okay? Location profiles is something uh, which is having some sort of settings uh, that we use to create the locations. Whether, where, whereas location directives simply means they are giving directions, okay? They are proper directives that, okay, this is the pick place and this is the put place. We'll click on location directives. Again, the same stuff. This is for sales and this is for purchase. So guys, one more thing. What the system will do, you know, uh, when the system is creating the work template, I mean, uh, when the system is creating a work order, it will navigate through all of those work templates that we just saw. So whenever it will find a match, okay, for this warehouse, is there any work template? No, there is not. No, there is not. Okay, this is the work template. Then it will try to create the work. Similarly, we are right now in the um, location directives. So it will pass through each and every combination. Whatever combination it finds first, it will succeed. And we'll see that how all of these things happen. And we can also define a sequence here. You know, we can bring some of these sequence down and up, you know, by using move up and move down so that system doesn't have to go every time here. For example, now let me create this one. I'll create a location directive. And let me say, yeah, before before uh, creating location directives for the purchase. So must be a pick location. 
by default. Okay, so this uh, should be default receiving location in case of purchase. Receiving location. And what should be the put location? Well, it should be inventory. Proper location in inventory. If you remember, we created a few location types and all. So if I go to warehouse, if I go to locations, so we created few locations for receiving few locations, uh, a lot of locations. So this is where we want to place the inventory. So the process is as such. This is where the original, uh, the final locations where I want my inventory to be. This is where the truck will come, you know, uh, they will keep coming and they'll just drop the items there. So what I'm expecting is that the warehouse user will put the items from these receiving locations to the required inventory locations this is my agenda okay and what and we already know that there is usually there is one default receiving location in, in a warehouse so when we always know that you know in this case especially in this purchase that we are always going to pick the inventory from the uh, default uh, receiving location so we really don't need to define a location directive for that then you will say weapon, but how will the system know where to pick from? Well, in case of purchase, we can directly use, uh, let me say, so this is the location R1. Okay, so what we'll do here is, we'll simply go to our warehouse, edit this warehouse, and we can see that in the inventory and warehouse management, we have default receipt location. We'll click here and we'll specify the default receiving location so this is the receiving location that's it my task is done so now i know that receiving will be done in this location and all our uh, you know the warehouse user has to do is pick the item from this location to the desired inventory location which i showed you okay so here uh okay so default receiving nation means no need to create location that location directives here. Okay, location directives here. But here we need to create. Why? Pick from it should be uh, it pick from receiving and put to storage. Okay, location. I'll do it here. So I'll save it location directives. And let me call it put to storage. And my warehouse. Work order type is so essentially, I want to put it. Okay. Perfect. And put it where exactly. So let me select my warehouse first. So it is AWH. Okay, that's it. Now there are again there are a few things here. Uh, for example, so once I once I specify these things, I'll click on save. Then this will become enabled. Uh, become enabled. I'll click on new. So if you want to restrict that, you know, always uh, uh, you know give this particular location only when these uh, uh, you know these constraints are met. I don't want to place any constraint from or to quantity or any constraint of unit. I just want to say whatever quantity is there, the system should give this thing to me. Okay, that always uh, give us the location. If you place some sort of constraints, the system may not give you the location. Once I've done all of these things here, I'll click on save. I don't want to restrict. If you want to restrict, you can use all of these uh, things, okay? Then location directive actions. So here we'll click on new. And here again, we can, you know, just say, okay, what you are going to do It's like, it disappear from there. Like put to storage, that's perfectly fine. Click on save. Now here we have a lot of things, for example, if there is a certain item which is batch enabled, so we will have to enable this. Uh, we'll talk about the non-fixed locations and the differences between the fixed locations. 
after some time first let's move on to you know our current scenario so if you want to specify but i was just just want to tell you that if you want to use it only for fixed or non fixed or for both so right now i'm using it for both the locations that's i can click on save but till now we have only defined the skeleton we have defined no constraints nothing we just uh, we we specified you know that this location directive will activate only for site 1 and for warehouse awh okay perfect it's going to do what it's going to uh, act on the put so basically it is going to search for a put location this is what a location directive is search for put location okay search where in the site one warehouse awh search for what only in case of purchase orders uh, purchase orders okay and what should be the location by the way here we'll uh, here we'll specify the location so we can specify the exact location where you want your item to be transferred for example um uh, we had some good amount of locations that me the location where all the locations like b0102 so we can define these things here b0102 so now what it will do is for everything that uh, you know uh, you are going to receive it will instruct the warehouse worker to pick everything from your default receiving location which is r1 which is set in the warehouse management parameters to this particular location b0101 but your question can be but within why only b0101 we can also have b0102 there are tons of locations there so if you want to hard code it uh, hard code it you know oh no only use this location you can use the location i actually prefer not to use location but use location profile id and then I hope I have typed this thing correctly because it should be correct. Okay, yeah, location profile ID. And then what I'll do is I want system to suggest me any location in all of these locations. Now that is a much better thing to do because if we restrict it to a particular location, we cannot specify another location and it will give us error. We want to, you know, we must be free to use it anywhere. B zero one to uh, B zero two zero two. So I'll just use the location profile ID. So we bulk. So what this will do is this will select any random, any random location and will suggest, okay, you can put it in this location. But guys, that random location is always the first location. <laughs> okay. And it actually, you know, it's like uh, the user will obviously uh, have the ability to override that location. And it actually makes sense, you know, just use any random location. That's the first location always suggested. If that location, you know, if user goes there and oh, come on, yeah, this location is, you know, it, it, it's totally like not at all empty. It's, it's completely filled up. Then user can move on to the next location. So all those things are always there because these are like real scenarios. Okay. So I'll just use the location profile ID as we bulk. Click on OK and click on Save. So our setups are done for the purchase order. OK, so these things are done. Pick location, put location. Perfect. And work template is done. Let me move this. Work template is also done. Now, mobile device menu item. After all, we are performing everything using the mobile device menu item, right? So mobile device menu and menu items. We need to configure that also, okay? And prior to that, let me tell you, in Dynamics 365, there are quite a few ways to receive, to do the purchase order receiving. So, order receiving types. Now, this is important. Usually, you will not use all of these things. You will use, uh, you know, maybe maybe one scenario. But anyway, there is a lot of there are a lot of ways to do uh, all of these things in purchase. Uh, okay. So one is purchase order receiving. Then is purchase order put away. Then is this 
this is important but believe me this is super simple actually it's like you only have to learn one process receiving and put away and by the name itself you can suggest okay what these menu items are going to do then we have purchase order okay these this is basically item receiving this is also item receiving and this is also item receiving then we have purchase order line receiving the same three instead of item it's line receiving here also line receiving line receiving and then there are a few other things also like um, license plate wow license plate receiving we'll talk about these you know after you know in, in the miscellaneous scenarios then there is load receiving i don't want to confuse you guys load receiving let us focus on all of these first these are you know reserved for some afterwards scenarios okay so if we only want to receive like it's uh it can be a scenario this is actually a scenario in most of the uh, warehouses that okay just do the receiving uh, we we don't want to put away right now oh uh, maybe after one hour two hour or maybe maybe after the break <clears throat> another warehouse worker will come it will take the items that are received and it will put away maybe there is a separate stuff for receiving and for put away in case of huge warehouses so purchase order item receiving is the way to go and then we'll take break and then some other one will uh, will come and use that existing work id and put away those items so that is purchase order item receiving receive po items on default warehouse receiving location here what is happening is work is created and not processed makes sense okay so basically our work will item will be received which means item will be received work is created but it will not be processed why because it is waiting for this step okay so here complete the work complete the existing work created in step one there is no one to here okay now what is done as simple as that super simple receive po items and obviously they will be received in the default warehouse receiving location work will be created okay and what this is going to do basically combo of up up to so receive and transfer the items to correct put location basically we are combining steps of a step 1 and step 2 okay that is it we'll talk about this once we finish this one basically this is very simple here we are scanning the items here we are scanning the line number that's it there is no other difference all right guys so just as you can see you know, this is like super simple they look like six but they are actually uh, multiple ways of doing just one job so this is what this is doing it will say okay okay you supplied me po number now tell me what is the item number item number that's it let me say one item is present in seven eight lines now which line number specifically you you are targeting line number 4 line number 5 or line number 7 
So this is basically the line. It will ask for line number and not for item number. See, this will ask for item number and it will detect the line number automatically. This will ask for line number and in one line there can be only one item. So it will, you know, it knows what item it's receiving. So this is how these are all the differences. Now our first priority is to try to create menu items for purchase order receiving. Okay. All right. Let's do that. Let's go to setup, mobile device, mobile device menu items. And let me create a new menu item. Already we have this menu item in the default setup, but anyway, I'll create a new one. So VK receive. Okay, let me give it the, so this can be anything and this can be the title. I'm just giving it the same title. This is what is going to appear in the mobile device menu. Okay, now mode, work or some sort of indirect activities. If I select indirect, then it is going to give me a list of indirect activities like log off, change warehouse, location. And these, these are very, uh, like some of the, uh, some of them are actually quite useful, like change warehouse. It's important. Okay, so all of these things are there anyway. I just want to create a work. And whenever you select the mode as work, do you want to use the existing work? No, we want to create new work. If you remember, we'll use the existing work in this scenario where work is already created. Here, no work is created right now. So I'll create a work, work process creation. This is actually what my menu, device, uh, menu item is going to perform. Okay. So we can see, as I was talking about, purchase order, line receiving, purchase order, line receiving, put away, purchase order, item receiving, purchase order, item receiving, put away, uh, license plate loading, and load item receiving, load item receiving, put away. A ton of things are there, actually. Anyway, we are going to use our simple uh, purchase order, item receiving, which is by far the most common. And it's like 99% of the customers use this only, purchase order, item receiving, and put away. Right now, I'm just doing only purchase order item receiving. Perfect. Now, here we have to note, there are a few parameters that you can set, uh, like license plate grouping policy. I think I'll have to make a separate video because uh, these are a lot of features here. You know, they basically, they define like uh, how many work lines must be created. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. So you can enable some of these things, like if you want to display the disposition code, if you want to print labels and all of these things. But for now, let's just go with the default setup. One most important thing here, generate license plate. In case of sales and purchase, I told you that the receiving locations here, like R1, R2, and the shipping locations, they must be license plate controlled. If you remember, I think I told you, license plate, license plate. Yeah, anyway, so they must be license plate controlled. And if you remember, we, we have created the receiving locations and the shipping locations as license plate controlled. Okay, uh, please refer to my previous videos as I've talked a bit about that. So then what is this thing, uh, this thing doing here? Generate license plate. Guys, the thing is, uh, if we go to our, so I was telling you, that our location profile see i told you that license plate tracking in receive and shipping like when we are performing the receiving and the shipping operations we need to have a location which is license plate control so if you remember the r1 location that is the license plate control because the location profile for the r1 location is license plate so it means that r1 location is capable the receiving location is capable of receiving the uh, of cap capable of handling the license plates. That's perfectly fine. But will you create those license plates manually? If you want to create it manually, make sure this is disabled. What this will do is simply it will generate a license plate. That's it. So during receiving. Are we receiving it on a location which is license plate controlled like R1, R2? Yes, these are license plate controls, are license plate controlled. 
So do you want the system to automatically generate, you know, a license plate for that? Yes, I want the system to generate it, then enable this. Okay, so this is important. Otherwise, uh, uh, while performing every work, uh, you will have to first go to the, uh, you know, to the advanced warehouse uh, uh, setup and then create a license plate. And that's really not a way to, you know, to receive, <laughs> receive an item. Okay, so always remember that this is again um, i used to get confused in this generate license plate and the location profile which means enabling license plate if you go to the location profile let me show you guys where i was always confused you know all these memories they just keep coming because whenever i'm teaching you i was always confused between these two if i go to warehouse management if i go to setup and warehouse and location profiles then we created location profiles for I think it was pk something like that B. okay so we created it for receiving okay and if you remember here we have the license plate tracking so i always got confused between this license plate and this license plate again i'm telling you and that's the reason i'm you know uh, putting it a bit more stress here this simply means that the locations which will be created using this location profile id will be able to handle the license plate and will be able means they will definitely ask for license plate in every transaction perfect this means this location needs license plate and this means, okay, please generate a license plate. I don't want to do it manually. Okay, once that is done, I'll click on save, VKPO receive. Then what I'll do is I'll go to my menu item. I mean, we've, we've created the menu item. I need to create a menu now, okay? Just uh, insert this newly created menu item, click on edit. Where do you want this new menu item? I want it in the inbound, okay. So these are the menu items. Hopefully mine will be here. Mm -hmm. Where did it go? Come on. Okay, VK, PO, receive. Shift it here. Okay. And do you want to, you know, just make it, bring it up, down, wherever you want, you know, you can, you know, just change these sequences. In case if this thing is not working, always remember to edit this first. It doesn't throw error and it's actually, okay, so something annoying. So edit this, then do this, click on save. So now our menu item is saved. Let us have a look at that. Go to my environment, five. I'm trying to log in uh, into the warehouse now. Is it in? One, two, three. Logged in. If I go to inbound, I can see I have my menu item which I just created. So this is, guys, how you create the menu items and bring your menus wherever you want. Okay. So now I think hopefully our all all of our setups are done. I'm assuming it's done. Anyway, if we find any kind of error, we'll just go through it. Let's get started with creating a new purchase order now. Purchase order, purchase order. I have actually forgotten which item we created initially. Let me go to product information management, released products. It's been a while. <clears throat> Meanwhile, let me go to account table. Mm, all purchase orders. And let me create a new. Mm -hmm. I actually forgot the item number. <laughs> anyway, let me create a new one. 
तो भाई सुनाओ प्रोडक्ट नंबर लेटमी से आई टी एन ओके तो दिस वाज द प्रोडक्ट नंबर दैट आई यूज्ड लेट मी चेक items with it in oh, keyboard okay let's take this keyboard let me check it's like everything is present here or not okay it is having mm -hmm. it is having some different things here let me check this one sony speakers i think this was the one i created All right. Let's use this item. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'll see whether my um, advanced warehouse setups are correct for the purchase order or not. I'll select a random vendor account. Let's select this first one. The system is way too slow. Okay, click on okay. I P N zero zero two. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Apology, guys. Actually, something is super wrong with my system today. It's, it's way too slow. I think it needs a reboot or something. It's been up for like eight nine days. I haven't restarted it yet. Come on, please! Now you're killing me. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm trying to add. Let me say ten quantities. You know, price whatever it is. Click on save. So if I click my menu item, VGPO receive. It it's like you know the purchase order is confirmed and sent, and today the truck is arriving with my items. So what I'm trying to do is, I want to receive them. Okay, the truck is there now. Warehouse operator, that warehouse device operator is is having that WMS device. So it, what it will do is it will scan all of these things, PO number, you know, uh, on that box and everything. I'm not using any scanner right now, so I'll just you know uh, scan these barcodes. So I'll I'll just manually type. Let me say I'm just typing this. I typed my PO number. For quantity, uh, I'll just click on OK first. Let this thing register it. So we have to click on OK so that it registers. OK, if, if it was something wrong, it would have thrown error here. Now I'm scanning the item number. I'm saying item 002. It's registering this. OK. Found out it's a Sony speaker line number one. So guys, in in the other thing that I was saying, purchase order line receiving here, we would have only typed the line one, so it would have identified of both of these things. Okay, so this is what I was referring to you. You know uh, that uh, uh, we were talking about uh, the various unit conversions using using the unit sequence group. So this is where unit sequence group helps us. 
if we define the conversions right now by default it's saying palette you can define whether you want to use the eaches whether you want to you know receive in boxes you can receive in multiple units so this is unit sequence groups in action all right so anyway let me select uh, each and there are 10 quantities i want come on i want to receive let me say only five you click on okay now click on okay once again now the system is trying to receive those items which mean uh, which means that work template will act now the work will be created location directive will act but since we have no location directive for receiving it is going to look into the default warehouse management parameters and it will select the location r1 and what it will do is it will it will receive the item in location r1 and it will create a work for the put order so in short our inventory is received here it's saying work completed let us see whether it's completed or not i'll go to purchase orders okay and refresh this so here we have the work click on work details and we can see so our setups actually work perfectly first the work status is open means work is created creation of this above line and uh, these lines below it means our work template worked perfectly fine and what is our location directive doing location directives also work perfectly fine for pick we did not have any location directive so it picked the, uh, the default receiving location from the uh, parameters page and here here our location directive actually it uh, you know uh, uh, it found a match that for this particular warehouse for purchase order and yes we have a location and it suggested us the first location and the work is open so this is how purchase order item receiving works as i told you purchase order item receiving means receive the po items of I should call it actually you know register the po items in the default warehouse receiving location work is created not processed okay for put away this is important and one more thing guys whenever we are doing uh, line receiving any receiving once this work is uh, you know created now this is for the put away now but the item is actually received in r1 and we can see this by using the inventory and transactions so officially right now our item is in the warehouse but it is in the receiving location and the item status must be uh, or it's always be registered so you can see we ordered 10 right now the ordered is 5 but the items actually registered Reg uh, so uh, we can do the manual registration if you see my procurement uh, video there i'm explaining you the difference between registration and receiving the items so this, so by default, when you receive, it's actually the registration transaction which happens in the background. So our items are registered. And can we see where those items are? Yes, of course. These items are present in, if we see in the warehouse and work details, it's, it is saying uh, that a work is pending, pick the items from R1 location and put it in the uh, B0101. So if I look at my inventory, let me go from here only let me check my inventory few details uh, inventory more info uh, site warehouse let me enable the dimensions of location location license plate inventory status okay and we can see you can also see guys our license plate was automatically generated okay this is because of that menu item otherwise it would have stopped us and it, it would have asked us okay please specify a license plate we would have specified there manually it's saying that item on location r1 
we actually have a physical inventory means the the items are there but they are physically reserved also we all know why it is reserved because very soon it will reach to the bulk location because our work is pending so it's reserved also okay so this is exactly how the things are happening whatever is happening in the work we can we can see uh, you know it's effective so Essentially, our item is now in the R1 location, which is waiting for another uh, work to execute. Uh, I mean, this work to execute by another guy or the same guy. And then uh, this item will be shifted to this location. For that, we'll use the purchase order put away. Okay. So, what I'll do is I'll close this. I'll quickly create a put away menu item. That's all I need to do. Set up warehouse management. Set up mobile device menu items. Create new. Now uh, here I can write VK. Okay. What put away? See you. All right. Let me use the same title. Mode work. Do you want to create new work? No. I want to use the existing work. So use existing work. <clears throat> as soon as I select the use existing work, we can see all these op uh, options actually changed. And now here we have few things that we can discuss, but uh, we are not going to discuss everything. We'll discuss some of these important things like the uh, directed by thing okay so basically here uh if you want to do splitting of work if you if you can override license plate during put you know if you want to give these permissions to the user which are uh, which are often useful uh, do you want to generate the license plate here no why because our license plate is already generated so guys this is how you check whether you want some situation, it's, it's already generated. All we need to do is, you know, all these items, the, the item quantity five, this is all present in this license plate, which means this item is stacked with this license plate. All we are going to do is push the whole license plate from one place to another place. So we really don't need to generate new license plate here. Okay, perfectly fine. No, no need to generate. And you want to display the inventory status. If you want to do that, yes. If you want to keep work logged by user display summary on pick a screen, you can do that. Don't want to, uh, you know, do any other thing. There are few things like group put away. Group put away is useful when you want to pick a lot of things and you know, uh, uh, put them away just in one go. So try this when you have few lines, a few work items, and uh, and or anyway, I'll I'll make a video on that too. But it's, it's actually super simple. So allow overpick. If you do, if you want to give all of these things, then you can specify all of these. Uh, you, you can enable them. If you want to overwrite the target license plate, uh, you know you can do that also. But anyway, so this is the. But here the sub, the most important thing right now here is this one directed by. The the two most important the three most important thing are which are obviously used by all the customers where I've implemented. System directed means the system will tell you, okay, this is the work ID, please process. User directed is, I want to, I want to scan a work ID. Let me say one work ID is pending. This work ID is pending, uh, work ID uh, 17, okay? And in this way, I have 100 work IDs and that too in different, like some are, uh, some are for sales, some are for something else. So if I select system directed, the system is going to pick any random or in round robin fashion or in whatever fashion system is going to tell us okay perform this work i don't want to do that i want to do my own work so i will select user directed i want to specify okay i want to finish this particular work okay and then there is something called user grouping also now this is some special scenario i'll not confuse you uh, we'll take a small uh, you know session for this sometimes afterwards so user directed, that's all I need to do. And you can see we have the work class ID. So here basically we can define the work class ID. So this is the restriction I was telling you for why work class IDs are used. Anyway, not talking about that. Right now, this is perfectly fine. Now this menu item can be basically used for any kind of put away. It's not, no, it's not only for PO put away. 
see if it is a purchase uh, purchase work or a sales work it all it has to do is pick and put so basically this menu item can be used for any kind of put away so put away use existing work yes tell who wants to direct i want to direct i want to scan that's it if you want to enable disable enable disable here that's it okay now let me add this to our mobile device menu I like this just beneath the VK PO. I click on edit and put away. Click here. Let me try to shift it downward on the third position. Click on save. All I have to do here is okay, hopefully, this is safe. Okay. Come on. Let me click on cancel. So click on see. It's, it's, we can see the VKPO receipt. So our work right now is pending. Let me say, okay, perfectly fine. Uh, this person received. Now there is another warehouse worker and it's time uh, to pick and put this thing away. So what now I'll do is, I'll go on the VKPO receipt. It's asking me for the, uh, sorry, not PO receipt. I'll go to, oh, oops, 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 cancel. It's coming on first uh, VKPO put away. Okay, I inserted it at first. All right. Yeah, it's fine. So I'll click on put away. And see, now it's asking me scan a work ID or a license plate. So we can scan either of these things. Let me try to scan work ID so that it can recognize. Click on OK. And it's telling us there, there is one pick and total five. Yes, we know we are receiving five quantities. Click on OK. Now it's saying I'm picking from location R1. I know you have to pick from that location only. We are like, OK, please go ahead. And quantity five, okay, okay. So it's just showing the inventory status and all available. Yeah, no issues. Click on okay. We provided the option so we can override the location also here. So these are all the options that we provided. And now I'm uh, going to put these items at D0101 just as we intended. Yes, it's perfectly fine. Please go ahead, click on okay. And now our work will be completed. So if I look here now, if I click on refresh, we'll see right now this is open. Click on refresh and we can see our work is closed, which means the item is now picked from location R1 to B001. So let me have a look at my inventory. So now my inventory must be present in uh, this location. B0101. Okay, so go to inventory, more info. We can see we have five inventory which is available for using, nothing is reserved, available physical also. So, yeah, everything is good here. Okay. And we have five ordered also because, uh, you know, it's, it's in the purchase order. So this is, uh, guys, how we receive the items using the purchase order receiving by uh, advanced warehouse management, you know, all those uh, uh, technicalities, how to use the location directives and all of these things. We'll talk about few more purchase order scenarios like these and others in my next session. But for now, I think uh, you are good to go. And congratulations. Now you know how to do inbound receiving and set up all of these so-called complicated processes. Actually, the processes are uh, uh, a bit more in number, but if you configure them sequentially, uh, it's, it's pretty much easy to you know set up. And more important, do not try to learn all these items by heart. Try to understand the logic. We need this, why? Because we are doing this. Okay, anyway, guys, so I think uh, 
this has already been a long session. So see you in the next session. Till then, cheers. Bye-bye.